Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video here. So, in this one here, I really wanted to talk about Jadis and World Beyond and just kind of the end game here with, with the Rick Grimes movies. Because there's this huge thing happening right now where, where they are kind of building to something that I think is really going to really going to change the scope of The Walking Dead. And this connects a lot to what Norman Reedus was saying earlier in the summer. I believe it was around Comic-Con he said that, which was when asked about the update on the on the Rick movies and what the hell's going on there. Why haven't they filmed yet? Why haven't they come out? He said that they're changing scope quite a bit. And so that's a, a big thing that they're trying to, to, I guess, deal with right now is where is this story going? How big is it going to be? How connected is it going to be with, with all the other franchises like The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead and World Beyond? How much are we exactly going to do here with the spinoffs in the future? And things are starting to, to grow and you can kind of feel it here. The first first part here of season 11 was definitely smaller. And again, I, I've I've criticized, you know, the Reaper arc. I like the Reaper arc. I like them as a concept, but I think episode four and on, they they started to it started to get a little tonally very confusing and and felt very rushed and they weren't so terrifying. And then just I don't know, there was something about it that felt so small scale that I just wasn't too big of a fan of. And so I'm excited that we're going on to the Commonwealth arc. I'm excited that Gimple basically kind of revealed that the CRM are, they have some connections with the Commonwealth. That was a big thing that he didn't mean to reveal at all. So that's going to be exciting to see how that plays a role in part two, but they're building to something here. I, got, I saw an article here from comicbook.com, and this is definitely really interesting. And I, yeah, I mean, this inspired me to talk about some more stuff here with Jadis and, and some other things that we got here, obviously, in uh, the most the most recent episode of World Beyond, which was episode six. So obviously, this will contain spoilers for that episode. And if you are new here and you want to get all my Walking Dead content like this, then make sure to hit subscribe. The Civic Republic Civil War. That is the, the big headline here that I see from, from comicbook.com. And I think this is obviously going to be the the big end game here for the Rick movies and where the the franchise is sort of heading right now, right? And who knows what happens after the, the CRM? This is the, the big thing that they're setting up right now. This is going to end the Rick trilogy. This is going to really end all of the current spinoffs that, as we know it. And then at that point, The Walking Dead, I mean, I don't know if it's, it won't necessarily be over, but they will likely take a break for a bit before they start to do other content. And that stuff is going to be like, you know, Walking Dead Next Generations, where they focus on like, you know, characters like Judith, who is like 40 years old now. RJ, who is like a few years younger, you know what I mean? But that stuff is likely going to come out in the 2030s, right? Like that stuff, that, that stuff that's like 10, 20 years down the road, that's not coming out anytime soon. They'll, they're going to finish the Civic Republic storyline in this decade here in the 20s. I mean, it has to. The Rick movie has to come out by 2030. I'm sure it's going to, but they are going to finish this storyline. They're going to finish everything else while that while the actors and actresses are all the, the, their current age. Because once they get, you know, in 20, 20 years down the road, is Norman Reedus going to be able to play Daryl? I mean, maybe he can play... He'll have to play an older Daryl, but a lot of what makes Daryl, you know, really cool and stuff is a lot of what he is now, right? He's very, he's very action focused. And I don't think Norman Reedus in 20 years when he's like 70 years old or whatever, I mean, maybe, let me look at Sylvester Stallone, right? Maybe it's possible, but we'll have to wait and see. The Civic Republic Civil War is, is going to be something that is, is definitely going to be very exciting. And they are clearly setting up here with uh, season two and it's all starting on world beyond and, that, and that's why i would say world beyond if you haven't checked out world beyond yet i would say for sure watch season two and if you're not interested in any of that watch from episode five and on there's a certain point during episode five where things get very interesting there's like a, a flick of a switch and all of a sudden it, it gets so interesting episode six was really great as well and i it's all of a sudden it's 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 almost like must watch TV, right? It's not like so interesting that it's it's like, you know, prime Walking Dead levels of, of storytelling, but there is some interest there. There's actually some excitement here because they are starting to reveal more stuff. If you're a Walking Dead fan, it is totally worth watching. Now to take this excerpt here from comicbook.com, this was definitely really cleverly worded here. I'll leave a link down below to the article if you want to check out the whole entire thing. But this is what they have to say on, on the CRM and how this connects to the, the current story here on The Walking Dead. And this is what they had to say. At the start of the zombie apocalypse, a decade earlier, the CRM agreed to a 10-year transition of power to the civilian government as a main provision of the, of the founding compact. Ten years later, Beale's CRM wants an emergency delay of civilian oversight, 
a direct result of the tragedies at Omaha and Campus Colony. And so you can kind of see right there that the CRM, obviously, early on, when, when they formed, when the apocalypse happened, they had this thing in place where they wanted this 10-year transition of power to a more like civilian government where, you know, I guess the, the powers of, of the, the very, the higher ups of the CRM would definitely be, would be taken down. And then you would have people like, I guess you would have the, the more traditional electoral process where people can, could become the leaders by being vo- voted. And you're more just giving again, power to, to the people. People are going to have way more power to do whatever the hell they want. But the CRM, they figured, you know, 10 years down the road, like, like things should be fixed and in place. But you start to get very corrupt people, and I think that this is where this major General Beal comes into place. Who is this guy? Because he's he seems to be very corrupt and is the reason for the tragedies at Omaha. And that's exactly why the CRM want to remain in power and don't want to give power to the people. They believe that the tragedies at Omaha and the campus colony deserve or, or give them the right to have this emergency delay of civilian oversight. So they get to stay in power for that much longer, right? That's literally, that, that, that is as corrupt as you can get. They created this serum here, and we actually saw this in, in World Beyond. There's this green vial, and on it, it says, like, Nebraska, Omaha, Campus Colony. They're, they use this vial here to kill everyone in Omaha, most likely. I mean, we're still learning what they exactly did with it, but it was used for the campus colony. They did actually, they bombed the entire place. And this was all to hold power that much longer, right? And so we do know that within the CRM, it's not just like 100% evil people like Elizabeth Kublik or other people like Major General Beale. There are actual people within the CRM that are good people that are trying to run this place, right? So you might have different political parties here and there, and other people are trying to fight to keep the Civic Republic, I guess, more free, but they're going in a direction where it's not going to be as free. And for the longest time, it really hasn't been free because obviously Major General Beale, other leaders have been, they've kept this place pretty locked down. People can't even talk about anything. And the military are definitely in in positions where if they leak out any information, they're, well, I mean, they can die, right? I mean, look at Isabel, like she's too scared to tell anyone anything. And so this is definitely a big, a big reveal here, right? I mean, the, the Commonwealth, or not the Commonwealth, but the Civic Republic taking down a big community like the, like Omaha and the campus colony, that's really big. And, and obviously that was, that was done so that the Civic Republic can say, hey, look, we have all the resources. We know how to handle the situation. We can totally do it, but you're going to have to give us emergency powers. You're going to have to extend or, I guess, delay that civilian oversight where people can be, well, just give more power to people, right? And so you get all this corruption here, and I think that's where, you know, Rick Grimes comes into the picture. Rick Grimes is going to take down these people, and that's where the story in the movies is going to be very exciting, and that's where I think when you bring in the Commonwealth and the Civic Republic's relationship with the Commonwealth, that's where things can get very exciting, because then you get to learn more deals that are being worked out here, and obviously that is going to be a big reveal coming up very soon. Rick is going to be a big leader in all this. He, he really is. Like, Rick, at the end of the day, once the story is worked out, once we get this, this CRM Civil War, at the end of the day, Rick Grimes is going to be the hero and, you know, I could totally see one day, potentially, he dies and they erect a statue of him. I, I would really like it if Rick didn't die, though, and they still erected the statue of him just because they want to show respect to Rick Grimes, right? And, and Rick probably would be against the idea and all of that, but that just, you know, that, that betters the character. That betters the, just the memory of that character. And I think it would be really great, to be honest. I think that would be a very smart thing for the movies to do to build up the legend of Rick Grimes. And honestly, I mean, Rick's story, it was really great on The Walking Dead, but it's exciting to think that it hasn't even begun yet because the movies are going to be so chaotic. Where this franchise is going with the Civic Republic is going to be insane. And it, and this is the most logical direction for them to go in, if you think about it. Because as, you know, the apocalypse is at first very shocking. It's very, how do we survive? What the hell do we do? As you survive for a while, and more people die or whatever, there's just zombies alive, and zombies are eventually outnumber all the, the living humans, you're going to start to have like societies like this that are built up, that are very powerful, that can take over the entire world. And I think that Rick, being at the center of that, you know, starting to build up a little bit more there, I think it's just going to be really exciting. You tie in all the, the emotional stuff with, with Michonne and Judith and RJ. 
I think that the, the movies are going to be so great. I am so excited. And honestly, Jadis, her reappearance here is, is bringing a lot. Like her reappearance into the Walking Dead universe is going to do so much for the story because she is bringing this element of, I guess, kind of corruption. And again, we need to learn more about what, what she's up to, but definitely the, the Green Vial situation, you know, that's that seems to be what's going to spark the Rick movie here. And I'll end it there. It seems like the Green Vial is going to come out, or what the Civic Republic did to Omaha and the campus colony is going to be released to the general public at the Civic Republic, and that's where a civil re- uh, war will begin. And that is what Jadis is trying to prevent in Episode 7, because I think she's working with the enemy as of now. Rick Grimes is going to find out about this because he might be at the health and welfare complex. This connects a lot with the reason why Elizabeth Kublik had to leave because there was there was an emergency that, a situation that she had to deal with. It was very urgent at the health and welfare complex. This is totally related to Rick Grimes and, and whether or not he escaped. I mean, all of it is all of it is starting to happen right now. And I imagine the Rick movie is going to be taking place around the current time, right? Like. I know he left six years ago, but they most likely will do a time jump at some point in the first like 20, 30 minutes of that movie. And then the the, the story will be set around that point. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to leave it here. Make sure to post all your thoughts down below. Hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.